everybody, Jeremy Blum here, back with another episode of Tech Bits. This week I'm going to be talking about uh, the AMD and Intel CPU roadmaps and architectures, um, what the current offerings are from, from both major uh, CPU manufacturers. This was a request by a YouTube user, BatteryJL. Alright, so first I'll talk about the development cycle for Intel and AMD. They both work on a pretty similar setup. Uh, Intel has a specific name, it's called TikTok. You've probably heard of it before and, uh, when they have press releases and stuff. Basically what it is is every year, what, once a year they try to have some new ar uh, architecture development. Um, uh, and they switch off between Tick and Talk, so one year is Tick, next year is Talk, etc. Um, basically Tick indicates a change in the manufacturing technology, so like going from 65 nanometer to 45 nanometer for example. And a talk indicates a change to the processor architecture. So an example of that would be changing from uh, a core architecture to a core 2 architecture, or core 2 to core i7, uh, something like that. So I'll just run through basically to give you an idea for the past few years where it's been. Um, 2005 was a tick. They instated the 65 nanometer manufacturing technology. The first to use that was the was the core series, like core duo, for example, and core solo. Um, in 2006, they had their talk. Uh, in this case, it was moving still in 65 nanometer architecture, but now moving to the Core 2 microarchitecture, so like the Core 2 Duo, for example. 2007, tick, uh, still Core 2 Duos, but now moving to a 45 nanometer processing technology. So um, this is like the, this is the, this is the Penryn CPUs. Um, 2008, Core i7. This this year in November. Core i7 came out, uh, still on 45 nanometer now, but a new architecture uh, that was called named codenamed Nahelm. Uh, next year, 2009, it'll be uh, moving from 45 nanometer processing technology to uh, 32 nanometer processing technology or manufacturing technology. So that'll be a tick. Uh, the codename for that chip will be uh, Westmere. And then in 2010, you'll have a talk again, It'll be 32 nanometer chips, but with a new microarchitecture that hasn't been announced yet. The codename for that is Sandy Bridge. Um, AMD works on a very similar schedule. They don't call it TikTok, or they don't have a name for it necessarily. But um, and it's not generally as standardized and, and rigid as Intel's is. Intel is a new one every year, uh, following that precise pattern. Um, AMD follows a similar thing, but they don't necessarily have an exact structure. Although they do tend to. Um, uh, release things at the same rate as Intel does uh, in terms of processing technologies and the like. All right, so talking about current technologies now, um, basically the offering from Intel right now, the the best offering, their most current CPU is the uh, Intel Nahelm CPUs. That was the code name. Uh, they're now called Core i7 CPUs. Those are 45 nanometer um, CPUs. Uh, the current AMD offering is the AMD Phenoms, uh, they're quad cores of the AMD Phenom X4 processor. So basically the Phenom X4s are competing with the uh, Core i7 quad cores. So that's what's out right now. Uh, and of course it's going to change probably before I even get this online. But um, uh, yeah, so that, that, that's what's currently available right now. Um, I'll talk about a little bit about each one. Uh, Core i7 uh, there's a few interesting things about uh, the architecture. First off is called a quick path interconnect. Basically what that means is they've moved, Intel has moved the memory controller directly into the CPU. So each core has direct access to uh, any memory that it may need. It's no longer on the motherboard. Next, hyperthreading. You might remember that from Pentium 4 HT edition. Hyperthreading is back. Basically what that means is that each core can multi-thread within that core. So if you've ever looked at um, task manager on a computer, that has hyperthreading, you'll notice that there's it shows there being two times as many processors as there actually are. That's because each processor is capable of hyperthreading. You're effectively doubling the bandwidth. Uh, next is a shared cache. Uh, this is you know this has been around for a while, but basically there's a shared cache that uh, each core can access to and now uh, faster communication times between each core. Um, as I mentioned before, 45 nanometer technology, it's operating on something called the high K manufacturing technology, a new manufacturing technology that they're using, hafnium based. Uh, Turbo Boost technology is a, is a really cool technology that came out with i7. Uh, it's particularly good in laptops. Basically what it does is it allows you to adjust the, frequency, the, the frequencies um, for each core based on what you're using. So if you're using a single-threaded single application, it's only capable of using one core. 
what it'll do is, is it'll throttle down the other three cores and use that extra headroom to increase the frequency on one core so that you can get better single threaded performance from, from one core. Um, that can also be used to save energy, bring down the frequency on all the cores um, if, you're not, if you don't need all of them, etc. Uh, the Core i7s are now true quad cores, so whereas previously um, the Intel quad cores were actually two dual core dies on one chip, now it's all in one die, four, four cores in one die. Uh, and lastly, uh, i7 is DDR3 memory support, uh, use DDR3 uh, via the integrated memory controller that I was talking about. Uh, okay, on to AMD Phenom. Also a true quad core, AMD released a true quad core before Intel, um, so that might be something that's interesting to note. Uh, other than that, a lot of very similar architecture things in comparison with Intel. Uh, direct connect architecture is one thing that uh, the Phenoms have. Same thing as Intel, basically um, a memory controller connected directly to the cores um, as opposed to being uh, situated on the motherboard. It's directly connected. Uh, next, one thing that's very interesting is the AMD Phenoms can do simultaneous 32-bit and 64-bit processing um, all at the same time. They have the hyper transport bus, which is the equivalent of the hyper threading that uh, Intel processors have. It's the same thing, basically uh, reducing bottlenecking by increasing bandwidth for each core. Uh, shared cache, shared uh, L3 level cache, same thing uh, as has always been in, in many CPUs. Uh, they have a floating point calculation accelerator, which is interesting, that's built into the chip. Um, it basically, a lot of the calculations you'll do on a processor are floating point calculations, and this helps speed up those calculations a bit. Uh, AMD has three main things that are used to um, moderate the frequency, the temperature, the voltage levels, etc. on the CPUs. That's um, AMD Cool and Quiet, uh, Cool Core, and Dynamic Power Management. Basically, those are just changing voltage levels and frequency levels to get the best um, power to performance ratio. Uh, right now, the Phenom is using 65 nanometer technology. The Phenom 2s are expected out in January of 2009. Those will be on 45 nanometer processing technology. But right now, uh, AMD is la lagging behind a little bit there. They're still in the 65 nanometer processing technology, and that's the primary reason why the Core i7s are um, basically demolishing them in benchmarks. Uh, and also, in another thing with the uh, current Phenoms is that they are DDR2 memory support, not D DDR3 like the Intel. Uh, Core i7s. All right, talking a little bit about benchmarks for each, just very briefly. Uh, basically, benchmarks have shown that the Core i7 is destroying everything that's currently available. That's just how it is right now. Um, but as I mentioned, the Phenom 2 is coming out in January. There have been some initial tests comparing the i7 and the Phenom 2. The Phenom 2 will now be 45 nanometer. Um, basically, it's a lot closer. Um, so it'll be something to look forward to when uh, the Phenom 2 comes out in January. Uh, it may really give the Core i7 a run for its money. But right now, uh, Core i7, most powerful processor you can get. And that's basically it in terms of uh, the current processor architectures. If you have any questions, please visit ultimatecomputers.net. Happy to help you out there. Um, please subscribe to my videos if you like what you see. And um, feel free to ask me any questions on YouTube or on ultimatecomputers.net, etc. All right. I'm Jeremy Blum. Thanks for watching this week's episode of TechBits. I'll see you next time.